This conference will now be recorded. All right, I'd like to call this meeting to an order. Uh, Cassie, can I get a roll call, please? Uh, Mo? Here. Lewis? Wilson? Castellic? Here. Labar? Here. Lucia? Here. Here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Has um, everyone been able to look at the agenda and is there any additions or uh, modifications? If not, can I get a motion to accept them as they are? So move. Can I get a second? I'll second. All right. Thank you. Um, on to the approval of the prior meeting minutes. If you've had a moment, is there any additions or, or sorry, is there any edits to it? If not, can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to accept. Can I get a second? A second. Look at that. All right, on to. Uh... I got a vote. All right. Can I get a <laughs> all in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. All opposed. It's been a while. I missed it. We missed a meeting. All right. Um, so on to business. Uh, number one, looking at the first year review. Um, in your packet, I gave you guys all kinds of information that I don't know if you care about or not, but that is kind of the first year in a nutshell. Um, I know some of you requested information as far as money expended by the city and revenues, so I included the financial reports. They are not the official financial reports, but they are the what we call trial balances for the marina for the last two fiscal years kind of going over everything that we did. Um, I also gave you the occupancy uh, sheets for the marina. I th hope those made sense to you. Those are the ones that we get officially from the state off of the canvas system that we use for reservations. Um, other than that, I kind of gave you guys some homework also. Um, as far as going over the marina, we had kind of went through um, critical issues list has been kind of an ongoing thing for us and I was waiting for you guys to kind of go through um, the critical issues list make your own critical issues list and additionally have you guys take a look at the survey results that we got last year they weren't just for something to do we were using them as a rule a ruler against to measure ourselves if we're getting any kind of improvement so I don't know if you guys had a chance to do all your homework but I turn it back over to you guys for any questions on the reports that I gave you or I think a lot of the main concerns that people had in the survey and everything definitely have addressed them over the past year or this summer yeah, I agree I probably yeah I mean I think kind of looking at that without writing anything down I I felt like mainly the top ones I mean excluding of course the public bathrooms at this point but even that at least for people that are voting like that has been addressed to some degree with the new systems and such so I felt like at least the top 10 or so of things addressed within the surveys are either in the works or already being actively sorted out. Um, Which I think, I'm sure the public has some understanding of how like a government entity like this works. But I think it's only been seven months this year. Right. Gotten quite a bit done. Not we, your staff. It's been it in. Um, what was expended on the the improvements that have been made? Um, if you look at that sheet there, the best way to look at the improvements that we have made is to take a look at the um, repairs and maintenance line item. Because in all honesty, that is probably the one that will give you the best idea of what we've spent this year. Which line item is that? That is, um, if you go 211.597, you're looking at 930.000. If you look at page uh, 29 to 53, um, on that, that that's probably the, the best barometer, for lack of better, that we have for that as far as year to date, we spent $35,000 doing repairs and maintenance. Um, we had some capital line items that we did also as far as um, the lights, the capital outlay with the 60,000, you know, there was about 60, or is it year to date balance, is we did about 25,000, which was the lighting on the break wall, um, was, was basically what that was. Um, 
but your like I said, probably your best barometer is if you take that 30. Uh, I take that back. Repairs and maintenance is 40, or yeah, 35. Okay, thanks. So how do you feel, I mean, kind of looking at just the expenditures at this point, how do you feel with directions of the money going out the door versus money coming in the door from rentals and, you know, and having the contractors market? I mean, how are you seeing a buy at the end of the tunnel or is it getting a little closer? I, I think um, we get our income from probably two major locations, which is seasonal rental and then also transient rental. Seasonal rental was above what we, we predicted um, by, at one point in time when I looked at, we were like 10, 10 to 15,000 ahead right. seasonal rental, um, where we are very much deficient and hopefully we make it up you know we can't take that ten thousand and put it in the put it into anything right now because transient is really low um we budgeted based off of 25 percent occupancy for the 100 days of summer and the only month that we actually hit that was the month of july during brown trout so that was that's where we're getting kicked pretty badly right now is just we we need to get more transient traffic in here um to to make the numbers work i'm sure part of that was to the cost of gas and all that going on into the going into the season do you think or is it or do you think it's more of awareness of facilities and such i still think it's a lot of awareness of facilities um the over the last month we've kind of started the facebook page i think i pushed that out to you guys hey start sharing this around and Looks stuff good. like that um we're having a tough time still catching all the spots that the, the old marina numbers are at. Oh, okay. Old marina phone numbers, which again was, hey, start checking all those websites you guys go to find where we're at. Um, a lot of people having a real tough time finding us still, as far as that's concerned. Uh, been working with the DNR to get everything switched on the DNR sites and everything else. Um, again, we did that branding change so that we didn't have that. Nobody can find the city of Alpena Marina. Now it's Alpena Marina in order, you know, the Googling. I've got us pushed in Google so that we're the first thing that searches when they say Alpena Marina. So hopefully we're overcoming some of that portion of it. Yeah. Um, again, with the Facebook, trying to push that out. Trying, you know, the more you guys use that, the more you like it, the more you do that, the more it gets pushed out to people. I did a boost on it just to see what it would do for us. I spent the five dollars a day for two days to see if it really did make a big improvement for us and i didn't see a whole lot of change as far as that's concerned yeah. just again trying to get us out um when people walk up to me at the marina right now our transient traffic is walking up to me saying hey you know you guys did a great job your kids are good here you guys have you know the town is beautiful all those things you know my thing to them is please like us on facebook please tell your friends you know so we have gotten a lot of word of mouth traffic that has come in. Um, if you looked out on the docks today, our big slips are empty-ish, but we've had phone calls coming through to us for, hey, do you have openings, um, moving, shuffling, whatever. You know, people are coming in. They're spending multiple days. So we're getting that kind of word of mouth out there. I think the more we go and do those things, you know, we keep pushing the kids to be better at what they do, those kind of things, the better off we're going to be. Um, so that's that's probably the one we're hurting in right now is we we hit about 10% occupancy. Again, I budgeted for 25 in those 100 days of summer, figuring the shoulder seasons were going to be um, icing on the cake type thing. So we're going to have to depend on those shoulder seasons right now to get us somewhere. It's historically... Has 25% been the number? Or is it less than that? It, it was less than that. I was, you know, again, you, you're you hoping word of mouth, you're hoping pushing, you're hoping getting those things out there. We were about 18 to 20 last year, so I was hoping maybe people seeing some improvements at the marina, stuff like that. I was pushing the Facebook pages, us doing that would get us that other 5%, and we didn't quite hit. So, again, we think gas prices were a portion of that. 
though when we have people going, we're still getting loopers in and things like that. Again, we still need to kind of push that. You're you're still seeing, as I'm following the Facebook pages for the Great Loop and stuff like that, you still got them coming from across from Canada to Rogers City. Yeah. So we need to intercept some of that traffic. And it's going to be a matter of us selling Alpina and not just the marina. Because when you go to Rogers City, how far away are you from anything? You got the ice cream store and the grill there, and then you're on your bike, you're riding, you're doing everything else. Close to the 75. What? Close to the 75. Yep. You know, that's that's the thing that we have to push is we got to push that. There's a grocery store across the street. People people come in and you tell them there's a grocery store across the street. They almost want to cry. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's yep. it, it's so funny. They're so excited there's a grocery store across the street. And it's like they don't care. It's a save a lot. They're just excited to be able to take their cart across the street and buy Today, the couple came back with a case of Coke and groceries and a watermelon. They were just excited that it was a block, half, half a block. Have you, do you of, feel like you've seen like any uptick or, I mean, clearly there's going to be a decrease compared to last year with the borders being closed with the loopers coming through, but have you, do you feel like you're still seeing a good grouping in them still coming? We got, again, you go down there on the docks and we have a really decent batch of local people in here. We've got some loopers coming through. I don't know how many loopers decided to delay their trip mm -hmm. because of the gas prices. I don't feel that it's out there, but you see it on the, on the page and nobody's really complaining about it yeah. per se. They're, they're all, you know, they're all still going and moving. And that was, the big marinas that are always full, the ones that you're traditionally seeing, the Leland, all the, the, Traver the Traverse City, the Charlevoix, they're not seeing any down downswing. I wonder if it is Canada reopening. Oh, we can go over there now. You're getting some of that, but still uh, they've got to cross, and the nicest spot to cross is right here by us. So it's a matter of drawing that traffic as they're coming in. They're not going to go to other places. We need to draw them to us. As, and again, as a destination location, hmm. you know, people, they don't realize as they're doing these loops and stuff like that, that as they're coming in, you know, the one woman said, the, the, the radar kept going off about all these dangers and hazards and everything else. And all of a sudden we're seeing all these buoys and it's just like, I didn't realize you had all those shipwrecks out there. Yeah. So we're, that's, that's probably the worst thing that we're seeing right now is, um, those are the things we're still trying to overcome. The I can tell you once a week, Cassie or I Google the old phone numbers, still trying to track them down. Um, we spent, there was one that Steve Wilson pointed out to us that we, Cassie got right on the phone with them. We got them switched. We got them changed. We got more information to them. We just, again, if you guys are seeing the wrong phone numbers on those sites that you're making reservations with or, or making decisions with, get with us cassie and i will track them down and get it fixed um other than that th those are kind of the the two big things i think that were our transient traffic just not being up where we need it to be and then our um just again still overcoming everybody has saved in their phone those old phone numbers seasonal slips are full Seasonal slips are all, I have one seasonal slip available right now, uh, just because people who were supposed to come in that committed to coming in, didn't pay, didn't whatever. Mm. Um, Would you consider opening up more seasonal slips? One of the things that we need to discuss, I think coming up here is part of our hard sell is going to be that we have so many seasonal 25 foot or 30 foot docks and there's just those aren't your season or your transient boats mm -hmm. those 25 footers are not your transient boats um but they are your seasonals they're your small fishing boats they're your people like that coming in so those will have to be one of the things we look at is do we try to request from the state to decrease some of those and then it's going to be some really hard conversations with about eight boaters that you're going to get moved to the other side of the marina. How many transient? How many transient docks do you have? We have 44 transient docks. How many seasonal? 
88. And realizing there's there's some of those docks of that 88, there's four of them that are the U dock. Mm -hmm. Right. That are not really sellable per se until next season. Presque I think there's a waiting list for seasonals up mm -hmm. there. I mean, they're really, they've only got, I don't know, Ricky, how many they have? There's not uh, a small number. They're mar well, they're marinas, they're marinas full, and they only have, I'd say, 30. 15, 20 tops transient. transient. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been up there all week, and they there's been about, five boats a day big boats coming in a day mm -hmm. and mostly they've been coming from detroit mm -hmm. yeah so i think your biggest challenge is they don't want to come the nine miles into here there has to be a reason mm -hmm. that they're going right by here and they're going to Presqu'ile and getting gas mm -hmm. and they you know they just got to be a there's got to be a reason for them to go the extra nine miles out of their way. Right. And that was um, kind of the goal that we've been. And that that's one of our goals. It was right when we very first started some of this stuff. I, I put a challenge out to the whole committee. And that was before you were here, of course. Nine miles, nine reasons. We got to give everybody nine reasons why they're coming into this port. So I think it's a matter of. That's one of the things right there. I am. Um, I worked hard to keep gas prices, fuel prices reasonable this summer as much as I could as a draw. Cassie, as she was going through changing stuff on that one site, um, discovered we could list our fuel prices with them. So now our fuel prices are listed on that site. Um, it sounds like it's one of the spots that people go to kind of make a decision. And I'm keeping them as, as reasonable as I can right now. I know I'm not Terry's best friend by any means. But um, I, you know, again, we're number one. It it brings the boaters in. It's you know, if we're selling a little bit more fuel, it it might be worth a, for us to cut our profits at that end, but see an overall increase in them because of it. So we are behind selling fuel. From what I was told, the numbers were again. I don't have good solid numbers other than what I could do math on from the financial reports that we were given. So I don't have really good solid numbers as far as what, what our actual annual sales were prior. Um, but we were a little, we were a little bit off um, until brown trout. We really pushed some fuel through during brown trout and Depending on a lot of times we pick up a lot of boats that are moving from Leland all back to Florida and stuff like that. We may pick a few of those boats up in the fall here still. And those are usually pretty big sales. They're putting on three, you know, two, three, 400 gallons of fuel. So. I mean, do you notice, I. I don't know, at least, at least when I've gone sailing, like those longer ones, it's just like most of the time you're trying to escape, <laughs> escape going to a place. But I know other people, they kind of want to go into towns and stuff like that. Have you noticed that a lot of the transient coming in and things like that, are they like full on provisioning? Or are they like, like I almost see like if someone wanted to go from Detroit to Georgian Bay, if I was in Detroit, I'd probably click over to Canada as fast as I can, but you have to provision. But if it came up like here, east side or yeah, the east side, like here on, um, are we seeing people, have you noticed people stop in like full on provision before they cross over? Or is it more just like, like you said, like, oh, I can go get that Coke. Yep. Hey, go, okay. I, that's what I'm seeing. I'm not seeing, like I said, the, the couple today was a, a 12 pack of Coke and a watermelon and a couple more bags of groceries. Um, I did see one couple go across with their two pull carts and come back with groceries, but they also asked us where to go eat dinner. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of people that maybe breakfast and lunch on their boat and then dinner in town. Do you think there's, I mean, I know we talked about this kind of mid early of kind of getting all this back up. Um, do you think kind of maybe not, well, it's not this season, but over the winter and going into the new sailing and boating season, really trying to push more events, like trying to work with a yacht club or something like that to bring more 
events that have a draw that I don't know if a Venetian night, a boat festival. I, you know, I'm, I'm just spitballing ideas out there, but try to push maybe some more where we actually pull people in, even if it is for a long weekend or things like that, or one of the um, touring groups or something like that. One, one of the things that w when I felt that you guys, or I guess when I was waiting for you guys to say, yeah, I think we're at that point is you actually reach out to different cruise clubs mm -hmm. and have a, a meetup. You know, maybe it's loopers, maybe it's, you know, this group or that group or whoever, but that's one of the things that they are, that's a, that they do. I think Press Guild does a few of them a year. They'll invite a cruise club up for the weekend and they'll give them a discounted rate and they come in and enjoy themselves and you're drawing them in so that the next time they're going by, they're like, oh man, El Pino was a good time. Yeah. I can tell you already this year, transients possibly going up from Detroit to Mackinac Island or going around and coming back. I've had four or five of them say we're coming back to El Pino on our way back. So the people coming in are enjoying themselves. And I'm, again, and, yeah. it's, it's getting them in here because once they're in here, tell your friends, tell your family, you know, honestly on the, on the door is the QR code to scan and like us on Facebook or whatever it is. Today, one lady asked me about Instagram, and I'm like, yeah, we don't have one of those yet. <laughs> but, um, you know, she's like, hey, do you have an Instagram account? Because I'd really like to, you know, tell them how great Alpina is. And I'm like, yeah, yeah no, I don't have one of those yet. I think we do. Do I? Technically, we do. Technically, I do? Facebook account. Okay. So. Okay, TikTok. I got to get, yeah, I'm not TikToking. <laughs> Cooter, on the other hand, will TikTok. Yeah. You can get your deck hands to do it. Yeah. <laughs> So that's that's kind of those are the weak points I still think we have. I mean, we still have some growing pains. I, I completely turned over a hundred percent of our staff over winter. You know, we lost both of the guys who were with us last fall getting things going and we completely turned everybody over, lost another employee in the middle of all of that, lost another employee in the middle of all that. So I've got some growing pains still with our full time staff. Um just getting things the finesse you know that's that's the word i use with them quite regularly is the finesse the um yeah watch watch the break wall and make certain the weeds are out of it and things like that so those are the little growing pains we're having with that um so some of the time that i really hope to dedicate to pushing pushing through some more advertising and stuff like that i've unfortunately spent training again this year we're going to have that. Everybody has that right now. We're just going to have to overcome that and keep going forward. Trying to, trying to get everything taken care of. I think I've got the two down there right now that I feel are going to be hopefully my dedicated people who are going to stay. Um, in all honesty, my, my one older gentleman that works there, Cooter, he comes even on his days off and checks and makes certain everything's okay at the marina. You know, he double checks on us and double checks on my new employee, Kelly. So really trying to, you know, he's, he's really good. I, he's dedicated to being down there between that and the bridge. He's, those are his things as far as he's concerned and going to do everything he can to to help us get there. I mean, he's the one that pushed through and got the boulders lounge done. He's the one that has done the little things here and there that you see that are the cleanup and the, the niceties and stuff like that are him pushing through and getting things done. I think the improvements that have been made down there, <clears throat> I remember having a slip there and having a dead fish laid by my boat for, you know, three days at the, on the beach, mm -hmm. the rocks, um, those, you know, things just laid there and laid there and laid there. They just were not, you know, kept up. And it's, you fail to realize how bad it was when you see how good it is. I mean, because it was nasty. And I think the goose thing has been a, whatever, what we're doing there is such a huge improvement. Yeah, and the kids, you know, it is the first thing. And if they, if I get there at 10 o'clock and it's done, not done yet, yeah, there's usually a, a pretty good conversation with a doc hand as to why they have not been out taking care of the geese problem. Um, I, I know people were hoping we would power wash more this summer. We just haven't had that ability doing, you know, getting the boaters lounge done and stuff like that. We started it here the other day. The goose calls are working if people would quit cutting them. They're cutting them? Yes. <laughs> They're cutting the speaker wires. So. Dress them. 
Yes, it's. Is, are we thinking it's the rest of the thing. voters or kids or I mean, do we need to be putting up someone kind of feeding them camera? Yes. I don't think it's that, gentlemen. I believe it was some. We we had some roundabout complaints about them, and the ones that were cut were maybe in close proximity. So that would be my guess. Our voters were. Sounds like we need to make an investment in a camera. That was, you know, there's cool. there's some. You know, and I know they're a nuisance and stuff like that right now, but the committee, the Goose Committee, is actively working on solutions across the board. You know, this is this is one piece of probably eight, Steve, mm -hmm. yeah. different solutions that we're working on. You know, the speaker system was one of eight, eight yeah, that was ideas. Test. That was yes. Pilot to see if those would work, and then looking at more expensive options if they didn't. Yes. So I guess we just need a a guard for the wire. Yeah, I was going to say, is there a way to put something over the top? So it's that someone that cut it. Well, I, I'm thinking about yeah, that. Yeah, throw a dummy line to it, put a 220 through it. But yeah. yeah, so I mean, that's that was one of the things um, hmm. that we, you know, that's one of the things we're facing with it. And they, the comment, the Facebook comment I said, I think said we were lazy. We didn't want to clean it up. We were lazy. And it's like, okay. So when we were in Harbor Springs and I've seen them on Mackinac Island as a uh, fake coyote mm -hmm. in the wind. Yep. And I didn't see a single goose in Harbor Springs last weekend. Yep. Which, there may be other things too, but I don't. I just noticed they had those out all over the place. We and that was one of the things. It's it is one of the things that we're looking into. Mm -hmm. um, the silhouettes is another option. Um, we talked about adopt a silhouette. I was just gonna say the voter adopt a silhouette. <laughs> Every time it you is, see them, you move them? Yeah. yeah. Every time you see a silhouette, you move it because that's that's the big thing with the silhouettes is you got to keep moving them around, much like the speakers. You got to keep moving the silhouettes about and around to, to make them work. So it was kind of an adopt a silhouette is, is a program that we're looking at for that. One thing that we do know is that um, there's some things in our early spring permits that we do trying to control the population of them that they're doing being done above the dam but they're not being done below the dam so that's one of the things we're looking into as to why why and if we can go below the dam now to the mouth of the river and try to do some control there because it doesn't matter what we do when there's 62 of them in the marina it's 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 a tough tough thing to even control you know, the other thing we did this year, instead of collecting eggs, we oiled the eggs. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's different, and they don't just lay new ones. Yeah. So we oiled we oiled eggs, but they only oil the eggs above the dam right now. So that's we're trying to see if we can move that operation also below the dam to make that happen. And we're going to <clears throat> go sighting in Saskatchewan, and it's all wheat fields. Mm -hmm. They'd have gas-operated cannons mm -hmm. all over the place. After a while, the goose wouldn't even lift his head. He wouldn't even, I mean, it didn't scare anything away. They got so used to it. Yep, and that's what they tell us with geese is eventually they will get used to whatever you do. So it's even those calls, we have to shut them off. We have to shut them off and move them around and stuff like that. Right now, we have a real big problem with the geese over by the launch ramps every day. It, Kelly power washed them on Tuesday and Wednesday morning. I wanted to cry for her because they sat on all four docks and just destroyed them again so it's just there there's no winning when there's 62 of them so that's that's part of what we battle on that is just that part of it Jeez, sorry about this shut it up twice anything else as far as the annual report with the marina you guys felt then there was do you think we felt we did pretty much everything in that survey that as we could. what as much as we could as much as we could yeah sure. i i, I, I still will say i mean like every time i've talked to someone whether i know them or not i mean they've all commented the improvements that they're seeing in the marina and how positive of a thing that is um just the fact that we're just trying to get back to a clean base and then work from there i think you know so a lot of kudos are coming your guys' way for at least that at least from my radar. Mm -hmm. So um I don't think any of us here or anyone well, maybe there's some people in the community that expected us to do everything, but um 
but I feel like, I mean, there's a lot of positive movement going into the fall and then especially coming in the spring with a with the grant coming through and improvements have been made to the boaters lounge and the, just the facilities themselves with the businesses. I'm, you know, I'm really stoked to see what next season will look like too for, for the marina area. I'm really hoping our fuel prices go down. Um, Mary Beth Sussman and I had talked about, we kind of, there was a progression for as far as the marketing and stuff and we're kind of getting into that next one. We, we can kind of move them together or whatever, but one of the big things was just the whole pushing out on Facebook first. The next thing we want to do is buy a mailing list, we believe, or an email list where we can push out to some boaters. Um, hey, visit Alpina. And it would be a combination thing between Mary Beth and me and Anne probably sitting down and making some kind of joint joint venture where we push that out to everybody and say, hey, come to Alpina, see these things. People, I can't believe how many people are excited they can get a margarita at Mangoes and walk around the street. Yeah. You know, just things like that, that um, other communities don't have and haven't invested in or, you know, telling people, hey, the city band is going to be playing tonight in the band shell, which is right there, you know, things like that. We just, um, I need some, I tried, I am not a Facebook savvy human. I try my best, <laughs> but I'm hoping to um, hopefully kind of do better with that and, and get get more information out to our boaters. But the first thing I need to do is get that page in front of them, and it's going to be trying to find that way to do that, I think is our next step. And then Mary Beth and I said, send out the emails or whatever to these people about, hey, visit Alpina. And if, if one in 10 pick it up and look at it, that's possibly a reservation for us next year. So that's kind of the next thing is, you know, like marketing and stuff like that. That's going to be one of the things I look to you guys for, because again, I don't own one of those boats that goes wandering around on the Great Lakes. Um, so I don't know how you guys decide you're going to go to Harbor Springs. I don't know how you decide you're going to go to these places. So it's going to be a matter of us all working together to find out how you guys find your locations and your destinations and then tapping those to go forward. You know, like I've got, again, 12 or 13 30 foot slips that are transient that we're hoping to maybe pull some of those back. How do I attract fishermen that want to sit in that slip for two days? Those are those are the things that we need to yeah. those are the things that we need to work on, you know, this over the next few months so that we have an ad campaign so that we can go forward. We need a tiki bar next to the marina. We got a nice bar. We got several nice bars two blocks away. 12 different eateries, 12 different eateries. You need to look outside the box. Yeah. Poker runs, go fast boats. They, they do them all over on the, on the west side. You know, that's a different, that's a different set of boaters that buy gas and, mm -hmm. and will stay for the weekend and stuff. And, you know, they don't, they don't have them. They don't have something like that over here. Okay. That might be something to try to try to get a for the chamber of commerce or whatever to try to pull a pull one of those events here. Is it companies that do that? Well, they have. Bay City has offshore offshore races, and I mean for a big bay, mm -hmm. you should be able to to do something like that, and then. I don't know how like Charlevoix they have a poker they have a poker run they have big go fast boat mm -hmm. I don't know if they have a club I don't know how they do it but, but okay. they, have a, they have a set weekend where that place is just jam, jam packed full of go fast boats I think some I think to some extent too like I mean last year when they had nationals for yanglings like I actually went down to go watch them and not, it was just like me and a bunch of parents and there was maybe a couple people that just happen to walk by are like oh what's going on i'm like this is the nationals for and i'm not trying to come after the yingling people in any way but you know with those types of things really try to 
I know there's always you know cost versus the reality of what you got, but really try to lean into that more. I, this community seems to struggle with sometimes finding what's going on in the community. So I don't know what the answer is right now to that, but when we have those events, really, I'm not even sure how you promote them properly and maybe I shouldn't be bringing it up, but, you know, just really trying to lean into those and, and share the excitement of some of these really big deals that are coming here and, and doing like those kind of races or things like that, or trying to work more with the yacht club to get I'm sure the yacht clubs probably trying to figure this out too, like how to get more active boating events out there in the Bay um, you know, things like that. I don't know. Did, would you, some people at the yacht club that would like things to stay quiet and <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> um, but it's like, you know, I don't know, like the yacht clubs, maybe like do yacht clubs, can yacht clubs co host other yacht clubs, like reach out and have that connection. I don't know how all that works, but, um, yeah, I just feel like it's like, those, are, those are the people that are involved in that kind of thing really put, you know, if, if we have the go fast boat people here in the community, Hey, like you have the support of the city and maybe CBB and Anne's not a power boat person. So maybe not DDA, but like, you know, maybe there's a way to approach those people that maybe have the passion and the ability and the knowledge to go, yeah, sure. We can host, we can put on just a fun, I don't know if they're called midget rates anymore, races anymore, but like try to bring just some component of that back and try to create excitement about it. Because, I mean, I know people freak out on the shoreline when they see more than one boat out there. When the Yingli's out there just practicing, I mean, people, it's nice seeing all that out there. And, I mean, more often than not, the times we've gone sailing this summer, typically the only boat. And if we see another sailboat, we're like, oh, my God, we got to go for them because who else is out here kind of thing like that. So try to create more concerted efforts to that in combination with the different organizations, the Yacht Club and all that kind of stuff, I think would be positive goal for those types of things going into the next season for sure okay can you do some research and find me like a poker run because I, I i don't know as if i would know what i'm absolutely looking for there you probably know and just send me the links because at that point in time i can see who sponsored it and i can start reaching out to them he's talking about his boy thunder that's what it's yeah. called. okay and that's like the biggest one around and there's some there's some people here that have you know they come to the marina a couple mm -hmm. times you know they're here quite a bit. They go to Long Lake. They go out here a lot. So mm -hmm. those people probably know other events. Okay. So I know a couple of them I can ask. Okay. Nope. I, I appreciate it. Again, that's those are the things that are going to start putting us, make a, making us a destination. So if we can start looking at those options, those are the things maybe we can utilize to start filling the slips. Because like I said, there's so many people who, when they get here, absolutely I love Elpino. We have a couple from Charlevoix who is bringing their boat around, it sounds like, to winter it here. Um, that's not just boaters. I mean, yeah. That's, that's anyone coming anyone to come come land or sea from Alpina. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's, you know, I, I my concern, you know, is Ann and I working together to, to draw the boaters, but I think as we get the word out, boaters who have boats have friends who have cars mm -hmm. and they come to Alpina. you know that's i think those are you know we talked about right from the i think the very first meeting i had with ann was us needing to be partners in this to try to to get to the point where we're both successful and both drawing people back into the area and you probably you know you're also competing with the inland lakes too where mm -hmm. a lot of people that would have come to marina if you didn't have those inland lakes if they're coming up for their cottage or whatever i mean they're going mm -hmm. they're putting on the stilts out in front of their house so mm -hmm. trying to attract the people that aren't the inland lakes kind of people and trying to attract more of those people that are coming out to these regions and stuff so mm -hmm. we were in harbor springs last weekend it was the Ugata regatta which is a big sailboat race and they all their slips in Harbor Springs are, they have things yeah. this weekend. We don't do transient docking because they're full from all the sailboats that come. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how we get something like that, but it's like. And there used to, I mean, there used to be the races that came up here. Maybe be worth talking to. I don't know if Steve, oh, I'm sure Steve. Well, the big but, thing is. But try to. The Chicago Mac racers hit that on the way back down. They have a port here in Alpino. Yeah. And then there used to be one from Canada to here until they immigrate, until customs changed that. Well, and I think those are the things that I was trying and I was working on it and I just didn't have enough time to keep pushing. But 
the one boat that came through again where they were man alpina is a great spot when we're racing i really wish i would have known that because we would have pulled in here that night blah 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 you got to get on the the um i said well how do you know where to go and he's like well they advertise well i'm reaching out to these races and the advertising and marketing people are not calling back so it's it's going to be a matter of really working with these race people and getting advertising in their in their um flyers and stuff like that because that's how they picked where they were going that night yeah we can get a custom buoy that looks like a margarita with an arrow pointing out yeah you yeah, know that way right right past the loading billboard mm -hmm. i'm telling you man if i saw that in the middle of the water i'd be interested so i mean those are those are some more of the things that we talked about as far as marketing is getting in those chicago to mackinac there's some kind of marketing that they have and i could i can't get connected with those marketing people is where I'm having a tough time. Do you know any of the groups like the AGLC and all those things? Like, is there anyone that you, when I say we, like yeah. you all could talk to that go, Hey, how does this, how does this work? How do you, I mean, I'm all about throwing money into marketing and throwing it in front of people, but if it doesn't have the right message and the right vision, you know, if someone just threw some like, Oh, Alpina, the warm and friendly port in front of me, I'd probably be like, okay, whatever. Like, you know, I, I look for things that I identify with personally. And so, um, you know, it's like, it's like throwing stuff on Facebook and hoping it catches people. But if it doesn't fit what you're looking for, mm -hmm. um, then it doesn't have much effect. But I wonder if any of those other, you know, loopers or groups like that have anybody on staff that's like, oh, hey, like I can kind of explain, you know, what are people looking for or running? I hate to do a, a survey, but, you know, just go, hey, we represent Alpina. What are you all looking for in a space like this or if someone else? I mean, I know we have loopers in our own marina and try to lean a little bit heavier on those people and go, like, what are you actually you know, what pulls you into a space that makes you, you know, you have, I mean, you've been on the so sailboats, you go on there and mm -hmm. you go, okay, well, either we shortcut it and we go this way, or we go this way. And you have to make, usually it's a decision of, do you want to go get drinks and go to a little bit more of a populated area? Or do you want to go to the isolated island and have a low key night and yep. trying to figure out what makes it so you pull over for it? For the life of me, I can't remember the name of that site that we've been dealing with, Cassie, that calls for the fuel. But I reached out to their marketing people, and it's kind of the one that the loopers, it looks like, use a lot as far as this is fuel prices, this is this, this is this. Um, we reached out to their marketing people, and I'm waiting for an email back from them. They have not contacted us yet, but they have these destination ads on that website. And I'm like, hey, let's let's look at what the cost of that is. And it may be really expensive, and it may be something that we can afford mm -hmm. and, and do. So. Yeah, I, I, I think a big thing is, yeah, we have a good product here, but I think it could be a lot better. And that's not just a challenge to what the city staff's doing because you guys can do an awesome job, but it's a challenge to our community too to also really I mean, all those races and events happen because you had an interested group of people put the time and effort money, and money into it. I mean, people used to talk about when the marina had all these flowers. Well, that was, I think it was someone did it on their own dime and came in and really took that as a personal issue. So I think really trying to find those people, I mean, even like when we try to do the pride thing, you know, you look at us and we all start looking at our phone and yeah. fun in, but really trying to find those types of things in those events and find the people that are willing to put the effort into it. And it's not, I mean, Ann's dad does all the five cases, it's like literally an army one mm -hmm. and with the timer and everything else, usually with maybe his sister and nephews and nieces helping out. But um, I think if we try to push more of those events and more of those things that will really draw people in for that first experience and go, wow, this place is a really unique and cool place. Um, you know, just trying to find those groups of people that are in the boating community and pull them out from there. But I know that's not just on you guys, yeah. from us too, so. Well, and it, it, we've had some, you know, some really good brainstorming here, you know, the poker runs, the, you know, bringing in a regatta or trying to attract a regatta into here. Um, I think these are all things that we can look at or try to attract people. Because one of the things is, is if they're not trying to struggle to find a home for it and fit it amongst 17 other things, maybe maybe that makes us attractive right now because we don't have this event and that event and, you know, can't have this. You know, the only thing we're working around right now is 10 days of brown trout. And maybe that is something that we can attract one or more of these things to maybe want to come into Alpina. And, and work with some people and see what we can do. Yeah. Maybe there's, I mean, maybe 
I know the tall ships came in and that's kind of its own thing, but maybe there's ways to piggyback off of those events if they become more mm -hmm. solid. And I know next year is supposed to be crazy with the cruise ships, things like that too. Maybe there's a way to try to, not that I think a lot of those people are going to be coming back all the time, but I could be proven wrong, but, um, you know, try to kind of lean into those and try to have those kind of full events and stuff like that. We don't say the C word when they're not in town. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> it, it, it draws them. It's kind of like saying Beetlejuice. Yeah. Okay. So do I, I think we've, we've kind of talked about marketing and stuff. So I think we got through number two. So number three for business right now is the commercial business agreements. We are going to end up probably having to write in a standard operating procedure for the um, commercial businesses. I got, I, I got my, and they, they asked for my, my wrist and smacked it a couple times from the Coast Guard because we don't have all the information we need for our commercial businesses that are operating out of our marina. Hmm. Um, I was kind of shocked. I'm like, okay. Did we, I mean, do we even, did we know about them? No, <laughs> well, I, I know there's commercial businesses that run out of here. I know there's a couple of them, but they were like, well, do you have this piece of information on that business? Do you have this piece of information? Do you have this, you know, I'm like, uh, no, no. Are we talking charters? Are we talking like anything? The Norseman or any, the, any. Commer yeah, any commercial business that comes in, I am supposed to have their captain's licenses or charter licenses and a proof of insurance and their registration all of that is supposed to be on file okay even transient i mean how are you how are you supposed to keep track of transient I, I and again i don't those are documented somehow i don't understand that but it's like i mean someone if you had a slip in the marina and they said even if you don't have a slip in the marina and you're in the marina regularly i.e you're using the fish cleaning station i am supposed to have all that information for you i think coast guard's leaning along lines of homeland security and all that kind of yeah so there that's i i kind of got my hand slapped from by them the one day that was that was a rough day because he walked in and he asked on one specific business and i'm like i I have this, I have my seasonal slip agreement. He's like, you don't have copies of the insurance. I'm like, no, I don't ask for copies of the insurance. Yeah. I said, I asked that they have it. <laughs> and he's like, you need to have that. You guys are setting yourselves up for liability and everything else. So at this point in time, now I understand why every other Marina has this commercial, these commercial yeah. agreements in place for the businesses that are running out of there. Most of them are charging astronomical money for it <clears throat> for a commercial entity to exist within the marina yes which kind of blew my mind i was i've been trying to reach out to a few of them trying to figure out why they're charging this much money other than they can for skill to that no I, I don't know i you know again they're this guy came up and Handed me his business card and proceeded to read me the riot act. I can tell you, as in Presqu'il, all they do, they do the same thing for me as they do for everybody else that goes in there and gets gas or gets a slip or whatever. They just take down your information. They don't. Yeah. He's never once at. They've never once asked me for my captain's license, my proof of insurance. They've never. I am supposed, and in theory, I'm supposed to have all that on file. State dot. Yeah. So they, they, them of all people should. They don't even ask the question on the application for the slips up there when you. No, no, it's actually, real pretty easy. I thought it would be a lot harder. Real simple. And that's you know that's what this guy's like. You know you have to have this on file. You have to have this on file. You're putting the city in a large liability risk. And I'm like okay. A lot of work to do. His copy of his captain's license. Did he have his copy? No, he was not. I sent him an email pretty quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could understand the acquisition of of that kind of basic information for entities that are operating a business out of the marina directly. But I mean, if you got to do it, you got to do it. My opinion is he was trying to get you to do most of his work. Uh, that's kind of what I was wondering, but I just again, I. He's a rookie. I don't know. I guess it's worth asking another, another marina, no offense to Presque Lure, I'd probably ask something outside of Northeast Michigan and see what they're pulling 
and see if they're doing to the level that probably shouldn't be saying this on a recorded screen, but like, are they doing it to the level that the guy came in and told you to do it? Or are they doing it like, well, no, this is the law. This is what we take in and that's all we do and see, and see what they're, you know, maybe look at Harbor Springs or something like that, who we've been talking to or whatever. And just have, how do you guys, how do you all, um, See, and that was, I gave you guys in your packet there a lot of information from other marinas that I just, this is what I could Google. Yeah, this is just up the M. This is what they do with their commercial people. And if you look, they are requesting a lot of that information. So that's when, when he, when he kind of called me out on it, I, I licked my wounds and then I kind of like, okay, now what do we need to do? And then you started looking at what um harbor springs and what some of these other marinas were looking at and it was oh yeah they are asking for all this information from these people mm -hmm. so that led me to okay yeah we are not doing what we were supposed to do and um kind of started putting our put putting this in in play for you guys to take a look at it and start Kind of going through these things it's it's kind of that very first step when we start writing these standard operating procedures it's the first step we always do with it is this is kind of the things that other marinas are doing read through the information that we have do you feel this is something and then i come back to you that second time with the first draft of the operational um information that we need so is this a federal, did, did he say if this was a federal law that that's what mandated that we had to do this or was this a state level? He never really told me what level. <laughs> I was just gonna say- The United it, States Coast Guard was standing in my office. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I was just gonna say there might be some worth talking to maybe um, one of the NOAA captains or something like that. Yep. See how, see how they approach, how they're approached about that from other organizations. Cause I mean, they're gonna, one of those captains can be able to explain. Yep. Oh, oh, yeah, this is what we do. This is how it goes. And theoretically, they'd be raising hell over the tenders coming in here all day long from the cruise ship, too. You think? I mean, that's a. Well, te yeah, that would well, technically. Because we have a Coast Guard plan for them, and they actually have to give us a lot of paperwork okay, so as they come on. Yeah, there's. Then, yeah. There's three gigs of, or three megs of PDFs that come through to us 24 hours in advance of that boat coming into. Uh, they wouldn't let him in last week. Yes. <laughs> well, that's because we couldn't we couldn't do the plan. Yeah. We couldn't staff it. Yeah, they'll kinda of, was kind of an unreasonable demand. Yeah, well and that was I they in all honesty told me that might be good for them because maybe next time they'll remember to call earlier. Yeah. Just drop them off at Mishkiwas. Who did they? How late did they call? Just curiosity. How how? I know how late they call. I know when they called me. <laughs> they I never. Come three days earlier. They never called me. I had to call them again less than twenty four hours in advance, and I never got a. I got it from a roundabout way. I know Stephanie at the sanctuary had similar short notice. Yep. Yeah, they had an itinerary change. We got to staff that thing too. And it's, yeah, and that's it's tough for everybody. Having trouble getting in the holding, so we become the fall position oh. backwards. And that's and that's fine. I don't mind that. And I kind of world cruising. I reached out to them and kind of told them, you know, we we need to come to some kind of agreement with this captain. And they were like, they were upset that they had to call the captain. I said, give me his phone number. I'll call him. <laughs> and they decided they didn't want Shannon to talk to him either. So, but they, you know, they were willing to accommodate to the point where it's doable for us. And that was the problem is it wasn't doable and they were pretty insistent and pretty demanding. They're expecting Venice, not, I mean, we're not set up for cruise ships truly. And so they got to get that across there. Something's. Yeah. It'll get better. Yeah. We will. They could pay for someone to run the bridge, donate to the <laughs> city of Alpena for no. Well, and that's that's part of it. That's part of why we're going to have some pretty long, hard conversations in September is just because they pay us for all of that. That's really great. They do pay us for all of that stuff. However, 
Yeah. We don't have that person just hanging around waiting for something to do. That means that we pull that person out of the marina for the day so then stuff doesn't happen at the marina. You know, it's just that's that's the downside of this whole thing is when our officers are standing over there, they're not patrolling. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that we need to correct between here and there. Everybody's going to get a Twit card next year and you're all going to be security. How's that sound? I got one. You already got one. Yeah. So, um, technically, you only need it once. Once it expires, you don't need it again. I don't need. I only. I only had to have it one time. Really. And then the Coast Guard doesn't require me to have it anymore. Hmm. You just had to have it once. Just had to have it once and pay them. That's all they wanted was their 125 bucks. Yeah. Okay. So, did you guys get a chance to look through the commercial stuff there? Lightly, yeah. Was there anything in there that just screamed, oh my, no, we're not going to do this portion of it? Because it seemed like the problem being is that I didn't have proof of insurance, I didn't have registrations, and I didn't have a copy of the captain's license for the charters that were going out. And then... None of that should be a big deal to get. I, I don't think so, because I kind of talked to the charters that were in there, and they're like, yeah, no, yeah, we can get you all that tomorrow if you need. So they were all good with it. I, the fee is what I don't know about. I don't, if, if you give me your stuff, I'm going to be pretty excited about that. Oh, we can justify it, yeah. I can't. I mean, like, I could imagine if there's a fee existing because there's a whole crap ton of paperwork that happens on the back end of it, but it doesn't seem like that's, I mean, other than, of course, collecting the information, but that should be a pretty seamless, in theory, should be a fairly seamless. It's not like you're spending five days afterwards submitting paperwork to the Coast Guard to register each and every commercial entity. And I, I, have, to, I have to register nobody. I need the form yeah. without. I need those three pieces of information. Is well, right. And I will say this too, like, if all of a sudden you're going to one of the charter captains or a someone that is running a business from the marina and you find out, oh crap, they don't have insurance or anything else. I mean, that kind of procs a little bit of a different conversation. That yes, and I think that was that was his probably what it, they're getting at. You know? And I think that was his point to me is that you know you you assume these people have this, you've never put fingers on it. He's like, how do you know that they have insurance? I'm like, I trust that they start have. tapping start tapping charter guys for a grand a year. That's gonna go really good. I, I, to me, in it, that to me is, I, I don't need that. I, I'm looking for you to just give me your paperwork. I don't know the logic behind it. If they're just shaking them down for some paperwork and they're going to charge them a thousand bucks for that. And that's to me, I can't, I can't justify even charging them $10 for it right now. You know, it'd be one thing if probably, you know, if you had a business in town, you're going to pay taxes. Yeah. If you have a, I'm going to say it's like an, a, it's like an Airbnb. You have an Airbnb, you're paying residential tax rates, but you're running basically a commercial entity out of your your private space, and so you're not being taxed like a, or you're not being treated like a commercial space as mu as much. But I, so I can understand why they're doing it, but I'm sure that the numbers are kind of all over the place with what's doing it. And I figure with the transitions, it, if it really isn't as big of a deal on the back end for you all to handle it, then I I don't see the value of putting a, a fee at this point, unless all of a sudden it turns out this is something completely different than what we're thinking it is. Yeah, and then right now I can't see anything other than we have to have just the paperwork. Um, the uh, bringing up Airbnbs, Airbnbs have a whole different set of standards. Yeah. Because they have to actually have a rental inspection. Yeah. In order to actually really realistically be one. But the rental inspection checkoff list that you guys probably have seen, um, doesn't really pertain to a boat. Yeah. So that's kind of something we're going to have to work with. Um building department with as far as coming up with something if these if indeed we're going to have some airbnbs that are run out of the marina having that checklist so that um the coast guard guys one is do you know these boats that are airbnbs have carbon monoxide yeah. detectors do you know that nobody can take the boat out do they have a charter license if they're taking the boat out for these people you know just things like that so do we have some of those we have one yeah, that's what I thought. We have one. We have another one that called and asked about it. They were going to buy a boat and do that with it. So we, we the potential is there. Yeah. And then 
the other thing that we probably have to consider when we're writing the standard operating procedure is how extensive or how many of these businesses do we want to put a cap on them or anything like that because that was the other thing that we're seeing a lot of in these in this reading is is there a cap on how many you have how many do we have right now would you say in marina i can think of two charter captains airbnb out and one airbnb oh am i right on the two charter captains mm, yeah I got Phil and I got Phil. Didn't they just pass legislation on the control of the amount of Airbnbs? Or am I misremembering that? No, maybe I'm misremembering that. It's a wild, wild west. Does a sailing school count as a business? Unfortunately, yes. Okay. So they'll need to have proof of insurance for us. Anything that, anything that they're defining that commercial. Be easy for the insurance parts. For I would hope the insurance or the insurer could take care of that. <laughs> But that's um and Steve show up at your front door. That's I mean, and that's what they're saying is anybody who's operating a business exchanging money. You're making sure that I it's a legit you're making sure they're legit. Mm -hmm. um, the one I'm having a problem with is like you pull in and, and dock off there or whatever. I have to collect your information. Um, how do how do I convince you you're going to give me that? I got nothing. Yeah, I can see I can see some of them coming in just to clean use the fish cleaning station are going to be like. Mm. Mm -hmm. What I mean, I think as long as you can, my thought with that is I think as long as you're asking and you can show that you're asking and then that way when they come involved and they go, what well, happened? Like, dude didn't want to give it. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it makes the city not liable for for that. I mean, at least you're put it now it's not that big of a deal I mean, yeah they, they're always i mean you're going to have that on your it's always anyways. asking for yeah for that stuff yeah, so the coast guard is always asking yeah. for it so yeah and that uh, to me is does yeah, it, a nice little waterproof case there you go well honestly it's a, a folder yeah folder your stuff's all stapled together yeah when they come in and ask for them next time i can say who do you want okay here they are a little bit of a smirk yeah what with a little bit of a smirk. Yeah, it'd be a little snarkier than that. <laughs> okay, so you guys are good with kind of what you're reading in these. There's nothing that sticks out. I will go ahead and write the first draft of the standard operating procedure and get that to you guys before the next meeting. That's including the rental inspection? That'll have to include the rental inspection because of the Airbnbs and then the sailing school. I'll have to figure out what I'm going to need from them as far as their liability stuff or whatever. Um, we had one guy that wanted to have a floating food truck, so I'm going to have to deal with that, you know, just things like that. I wanted to have a floating hot dog stand. You know, they like an Airbnb and a boat, they, they, you might want to require a survey, an actual survey. Yeah. yeah. For the first first time. Yeah, when you're the new one, yeah. Okay. A floating hot dog stand. A floating hot dog stand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't... A baseball game of the Giants to a regular hot dog stand. <laughs> floating hot dog stands. Hot dogs available. <laughs> When they, say that. they were going to go down the, the, by the chickadee at one point in time, I'm just going to tell you. All right. <laughs> yeah. Jason will come out and customize like, that's time in a hot dog. I can make a hot dog bed. So other than that, Harbor Masters report, we survived the brown trout. Wait. Was it shorter, last last shorter than previous years? No, it was longer. It was a bajillion years long. <laughs> um, yeah, we survived. We survived the brown trout. Um, the fish cleaning station, to my understanding, only backed up once. Pretty excited about that. And by the time I got there, I don't know if it was operator error or somebody didn't pull out the red button, push the button, I don't know. But by the time I got there, believe it or not, it was running again. So I don't know what, what the whole situation was there. Um, of course, weather played into everything there. So that was kind of a little bit of a crazy night or crazy day there. Um, parking was still hair pulling adventure. Next year, I'm going to try to work directly with security as opposed to trying to go through appropriate channels 
and basically give them a folder that says here, this is what I need you to do with the parking in the marina. Um, because we did give everybody, you know, we had the passes. If you needed to get in, you had to get your fish in a truck pass and go in. And either security let nobody in, including boats with trailers that needed to get launched, or they let everybody in. I got invited to say, I need to go check out my boat. Mm -hmm. And you were supposed to have the beautiful fish in a, driving this truck. Yep, I got in. I infiltrated. Yep, you infiltrated. So got to work with security better just because the people who do have docks over there are, we're having still having a difficult difficult time having enough parking. I worked with brown trout, i.e. strong armed them to make certain that they didn't spread themselves out for nine county miles while we were there um, to try to help with the parking. I'm sure there'll be one big boat not there. May help. Yeah, what's the deal with that? He is in, you know, donate your boat auctions. Right. Yeah. He is in a donate your boat auction and supposedly they have all the paperwork and the boat was up for auction and it's still sitting in my parking lot. So Airbnb spontaneous that. combustion would be the best. That would be the best thing that could happen to. I think the Yacht Club should adopt it and have it be the, uh, the crowning jewel official boat for any races. Mm-hmm. LPS so it up and sink it. the AB Crow, the Templar, whatever name it's going by, maybe it could be the next shipwreck. Yeah. Every time yeah. we put it in the marina, it goes to the bottom of the marina. Island. So yes, the the AB Crow is hopefully going to be out of here shortly, if somebody will buy it. You all excited about that? Really. If it's not out of here by next year, what are we doing with it? I have no clue. I'm still trying to, I'm working on the fact that maybe somebody is going to buy it and it'll go on a truck and it'll go away and we never have to see it again. Um, because right now we can't even put it in the water, it sinks. Sweet. It was pulled out of the water because it was sinking and you have to put it in the water on the cradle or on the straps for the weekend, hoping it swells enough that it doesn't sink and it doesn't do that. <laughs> like his boat? Like what? Owns the boat. Well, it's owned by an individual. He is still claiming it. The unfortunate thing is sometimes they get left and then we own them. Are they paying the? They, I've fine? sent them. Yeah, I've sent them. I have not sent them a bill yet. They're not going to be happy because we had to move the boat, so they're getting charged for that. So that's. That's the that's, that's raffling it right now. I'm hoping it goes on a trick and leaves. <laughs> it could be your crown and jewel of the city. Uh huh. We'll make it into a playground. Yeah. There you go. We'll make put it into a playground. Get a little sand so it, put all the geese. Can't get. We'll put all the geese on it. Yeah. Like a geese coop. Yeah, pretty, put it as a, like a play play structure. Perfect. There you go. I see no problem with it. Yep. You can get that done right now. Work right on. I'm gonna hop right on that one. Um, we got the boaters lounge done a week later than we wanted to. We wanted it to be open when brown trout started, but we didn't quite make it. Um. Looks good though. Yeah, that's great. Really nice. I was I'm looking at Jason. He's just nodding his head. He's not. He's not really. <laughs> oh, it looks great. Yeah, we did okay. Um, got a couple more pieces of small appliances to buy. The um, Yingling Sailing League bought us a refrigerator for in there, so that was nice of them. I have to thank them publicly for that. Um, them and Steve Wilson. Between the two of them, they donated enough money that we could buy the refrigerator. So that was really awesome. Do we have an honoring ceremony for them? We have a plaque I was gonna, I was gonna put a plaque on it for them, the little I little sticker on there that says "Donated by." It was out there. Yep. So I was. That was that was a big savings for us by them buying that. That gives us a little bit more money that I can spend on a couple other things for the voters' lounge. Put the TV in there. That was a. That was a give me. I was told to either get it out of City Hall or make it go away, and I made it go away to there. <laughs> it worked out good for us. Um, the other kick in the teeth I got the other day was our fueling system at the marina and needs some repairs. Um, I said to, I asked the guy, I said, can you just give me a rough idea? He said fifty thousand dollars. So we put in just a couple short runs of pipe. There's some piping that there's a federal lawsuit over right now, um, our class action lawsuit over, and we unfortunately have that piping 
so they will no longer test it. And if I can't get it tested, we can't run the fuel system next year. You don't have a choice on that one? No. Nope. So somewhere I have to come up with 50,000 roughly. I'm hoping it's just 50. He just said 50 to 100 is what he told me. Works range. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm really hoping it's lower than that and we can get through this. That would replace everything, the pumps and the whole shot right to the beat? Oh, oh no, no, Al, no. That is from the berm. That is from the berm yep. to the beginning of the docks. Okay. That is not the line out to the pumps. That is just that, that yeah, I know. 50 feet. Ouch. I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I may have mentioned that to that guy. I thought it was maybe highway robbery while we were talking about it, but that was what they told me is it's probably $50,000 to replace that 100 feet or whatever. Outside of Cooter's expertise? It's outside of Cooter's expertise. Actually, it probably, and this is a sad thing, it's probably not outside of Cooter's expertise. We could probably do it. Unfortunately, we don't have the license to do it. How much is the license? I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say, license is cheaper. Fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah. fifty thousand. <laughs> 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 um, other than that, hired another dock hand. Nicole now works for us. Also, um, she's helping us fill in the slots that we are having because our we have three soccer players and they're all going back to to uh, soccer here shortly so we have a little bit of openings there um just pulling you guys after labor day is it okay for us to drop the dock hours back to six o'clock is that reasonable after labor day or mm, that's fine by me we, ba we barely use them though so is there still someone available for call on fuel or not just shut her down and be done well and what that's we would be open till six o'clock every day and then um, typically I'm back in at seven. A lot of boats, if they're coming in and parking for the night, they'll call the phone. Uh, the In theory, the phone system rings to me at night and I can talk to them. I've run back to town probably four or five times this summer and field boats, you know, as needed. So it's not a big deal. Other than that, that's pretty much my Harbor Master report. Anything you guys have questions on that we haven't addressed already? Oh, I think I'm all set. Public comment? Member comment? Yeah. When's the algae guy coming? The algae guy came on Tuesday. He sprayed Tuesday. He sprayed heavy on Tuesday. He apologized profusely. Um, the, in July, when he was supposed to come here, they are booked so solidly all summer that in July, when he was supposed to come, his boat broke down and they couldn't get us again until their, our next scheduled date in August. How long does it take to kill stuff? He said within a week he should start seeing an improvement. Should we try to get him like before brown trout next year? He was scheduled to be here before brown trout. Okay, I don't know if it was before or after. Yeah, he went through the marina and he felt, he's like, I feel real bad. He's like, I'm sorry, you've struggled with this. I'm like, thank you, but it doesn't really help. You know, we're, it is what it is. There's nothing we could have done about it. He couldn't get back up here. There's nobody else that can do it. But the algae should be, you should see, and I'm seeing it already is starting to die off. What's that cost I've done? $1,300 every time he comes. But that kills the algae. And it kills all the um, the ones that grow up. I can't think of what they're called. He tells me the name of them every time. But he said all of those are killed with that. And he, they spray the, they bring their boat, and they walk, run around, and they spray the entire marina and as far in by the boats as they can. They can't go between the boats, but they can spray up to them. And you hope you get a little drift underneath of them then to kill anything that's hanging out underneath. Again, some of this will go away in five or six years when we can put that big box culvert in, if we can do that. I mean, right now, realistically, if that fuel issue is as bad or worse than they say it is, yeah. that'll probably have to be our next grant request. will have to be the fuel system, unfortunately, and not the bathrooms. 
So, just something to keep in mind. Again, hoping, really, really hoping that that is not as bad as we think it is. Um, so it's not leaking or anything, you just can't test it? because can't test it because we can't test it. They can't pressure test it at that point in time. We're in violation oh, yeah. with the Lara people. So we need to get it back in compliance. What's the fine? Less than 50 grand? <laughs> no, they red tag it. Oh. <laughs> they red tag it and lock the tanks. Man, that's fine for a couple of years. Yeah, nope. They red tag it and lock the tanks. It says we can't test it. Can we pump it out? Yeah. Um, any, well, I guess that, well, any staff comments? All right, everyone's good. If I can get a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion. Yes, a second. All right, motion carried. All in favor? Uh, aye, aye. Aye, aye. Oh my thunder. Thanks guys. Yeah.